Final Fantasy 2 is goaded. Just gotta, uh, just wanna get through the stage. I just don't, oh, I don't wanna put up with this stage anymore. I wanna go. There we go. Just get me out of here. Get me out of here. <laughs> uh. Oh my gosh. All right, five, three, let's go. Hello fellow heroes, I'm Action Smack Chan, the two-in-one hero made up of a virus from the 70s, and a guy who likes to play things. And I am pretty sure I've mentioned it before, but I am a fan of the Mario Brothers, but <laughs> uh, I might have also said it before that I am not good, nor do I have a very good, um, a very good track record of beating Mario games <laughs> so um, I need to stop being a fraud and actually beat a Mario game <laughs> and among the games that I have not beaten is the original Super Mario Bros so um, <laughs> let's see how this goes because I have I've never beaten this game I think I got to like the last level and didn't know what to do before um, but yeah and I am more a Luigi fan than a Mario fan as far as the characters, so I will do this as Luigi. <laughs> uh, I'm playing this on my NES Mini, so I wanted the full um, NES controller experience. And this is as close as I could get without, um, you know, actually being... actually using my NES, because capturing things on the NES sounds kind of hard, because it's like mono. <laughs> um, I could probably do it, but it won't sound great. <laughs> uh, but yeah, gosh, I did not recall that Luigi just takes the Mario sprite uh, when he goes and becomes like uh, flower. Fire flower. In this first game. I did not remember that. I sort of didn't think... Think too much about it pro back in the day, probably. How do I get up there? Oh, gosh. Oh, well, I'm just a small Luigi now. That's okay. I could get all these dang old coins. Look at all these coins. <laughs> uh... The, some of these secrets in the first level are just kind of ingrained in me because, uh, you know, exposure to it when you're in such a developmental age. Oh man. Mario. I don't want to be Mario. Oh, geez. So something I didn't really think about <laughs> with uh, my setup right now is that you could actually, uh, Uh, you could actually plug in your Super Nintendo Mini controller into the NES Mini and use it as a controller. Although the buttons may not be exactly what you expect it to be. Um, like at the moment, I am essentially using X uh, the way I would usually use B. And... Um, Everything else is A, as far as I can tell. Um, but yeah, all right. But that's just what I have plugged in the first player. Um, oh, shoes. Okay, yes. I can play this game. I'm good at this game. I can play Mario. Who can't play Mario? I can play Mario. Huh. Huh. And this, I'm not even sure if this counts as a secret anymore. Because <laughs> it's like the easiest uh, thing to be all like, maybe I could try that. Go up. Go into the pipe, Luigi. There we go. And this is where I start having trouble. <laughs> Anything past uh, World 1. Oh shoot, oh shoot, oh shoot. Yeah. <laughs> We're in for it today, aren't we? 
Go away, Mario. That's just where your life is gonna be for a while, Mario. Yes. You're definitely gonna start having trouble here. I'm not good at Mario games. I definitely beat more Kirby and Mega Man games than I did Mario games, if I were to actually tally them. But I still think of myself as a dang old Mario fan, because how can I not? I love Luigi. Mario Bros are such a good time. I invested a lot of time in, uh... Ooh. <laughs> Jeez. I invested a lot of time in playing as Luigi. Aw, oh, man. Aw, oh, man, we are in for it. Yes. Keep going. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm just getting warmed up. Just getting warmed up. Uh, I played a lot of Luigi's Mansion. Loved Luigi's Mansion. Mostly the first one. Didn't get around to putting a lot of time into the second one. Um, I bought the third one on like Halloween when it, on the year it released, but did not get around to actually playing it. But man, the first one. <laughs> it's funny, because like, I was actually kind of scared of that game when I first got it. I was like, oh yeah, Luigi, I love Luigi. I was like, eight, or seven or eight. <laughs> um, I was like, yeah, and the, but it's like ghosts, and it's like, oh, Luigi's scared. Oh no, I'm not Luigi. Yes, to not be scared, because I, I'm, I'm feeling scared now. <laughs> and then um, I never actually beat Luigi's Mansion as a kid, um, not when it first came out, but like I grew up a little bit, and I think I beat it like closer to when I was like 11 or 12 is when I was like, I'm going to go back to these games and see if I could beat them. Um, and that's around when I like beat, uh, beat Luigi's Mansion, and then I beat, um, it's called Wind Waker. Yeah, that's when I finally got around to beating Wind Waker. I loved that. Oh, that's when I that's when I really became a fan of like Zelda. Um, and started like actually beating the games myself. Because prior to it, I would be like just kind of. It's kind of. Oh, I want this. Can I still get it? There we go. Come to me, mushroom. Yes. Um, but yeah, beforehand, I would just kind of be, like, dabbling. Because <laughs> as a little kid, I didn't really, um, I didn't do very well in beating games. I would just kind of dabble in them, especially, like, in the, uh, um, in, the, like, the first levels of stuff. Unless I was, like, playing it with someone else. Like, if I were playing with my... Like, playing Kirby with my brother. <laughs> yeah, I would totally, like, be able to beat that. Because it wasn't just all on me. Um, ah, oh, shoot. I want this. There we go. Huh. There's, like, another secret up there. I think there was, like, a mushroom one-up up there. Oh, well. I don't need no one-up. I'm like doing this very dangerously because I just realized I was uh, watching the capture instead of the actual um, game. So like, how come I feel a little bit laggy? I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. I'm staring at the I'm staring at the capture. It's not a great idea. It's not the best idea I've had today. What was I saying? Oh yeah, I became a Zelda fan uh, mostly after after Wind Waker because I did not 
um, get around to beating a whole lot of Zelda, like, at all, uh, beforehand. Like, the first Zelda was kind of hard. Uh, that game is pretty cryptic, and I still haven't actually beaten it today. I need to get around to beating that. Um, let's see, uh... I remember getting pretty far on my own in, um, in Ocarina at the time, but I don't think I beat that as a, as a little kid. Um, a lot of my exposure would be, like, watching my siblings get further in that game. And it was interesting, uh, back then. Um, before there was, a uh, culture of just watching people play video games as a as kind of mainstream entertainment the way it is today <laughs> but it was definitely something i did i used to just watch my brother play games and he would like come get me from the other room um if there's like a cutscene in a game uh that i was engaged with uh like a lot of my early exposure to like final fantasy Final Fantasies and stuff, um, my brother would be all like, hey, hey, there's a cutscene going on, and then I would, like, uh, try to keep up, and sometimes um, he would, like, read in the voices. <laughs> uh, like, um... Oh, man, another interesting thing um, that I didn't really... didn't really understand until, like, I played it myself. Final Fantasy IX myself recently. Um... Is that there was a cutscene in Final Fantasy IX uh, where Zidane uh, explains the difference between uh, knives, swords, and daggers. Ah, oh, shoot. <laughs> but yeah, Zidane um, explains the difference between knives, swords, and daggers. Um, how they're defined largely um, according to the size of the blade. And, um, of course, I was, like, really young, uh, when I watched that cutscene. But for the longest time, I was not able to cite why I knew that, that piece of information. Um, like, the, like how, uh, like how to distinguish, you know, the definition between a knife, a dagger, and a sword. Um, <laughs> but since I saw that cutscene at a really young age, it was just kind of information that I knew, and I just kind of assumed it was like a, um, it was just kind of common knowledge, but it is not. It was not common knowledge. <laughs> I found that out, um, like, a, a far farther down the line, right? Like when I was like in high school. And, like, there was, like, a group of friends, um, just kind of in conversation, going out, like, what is the difference? <laughs> They're, like, the same thing! <laughs> like, I didn't, I didn't, like, say anything, because I was just, I wasn't, like, participating in the conversation. I was just kind of listening in, uh, probably spacing out about other things, but, like, I, my brain turned back on when they were discussing that part. <laughs> And, um, I was all like, what do you mean, what's the difference? Of course, like, it's about the blade length. Knives have the smaller, the smallest one. Daggers are, like, kind of in the middle, and swords are longer. <laughs> uh, it's common knowledge, isn't it? But you know what, those guys, they did not play Final Fantasy IX, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, um, I played Final Fantasy IX, uh, last year. And, um, and was finally able to see that cutscene again and be all like, oh, that's how I knew that. Because Zidane was mansplaining to, to Garnet <laughs> or something. <laughs> uh. Can I get up there? I should be able to get up there, right? Maybe not quite. Ah, oh, whatever. Take that, take some fireballs. And I want the star. 
I want to go under this thingy. Yeah, come on. I want to go under that thingy. <laughs> it's harder to do that than I remember. Huh. Man. One of these is a mushroom. Or one up. Was it was it this one? Yeah. I'm gonna need that, because I'm bad. But yeah. Oh man, I'm glad I finally played all those Final Fantasies. <laughs> uh I basically played all of the shoes. <laughs> I basically played like all of them. Definitely one through six. Eight, nine, ten, ten, two. Um, I played 13. And I think that's just where I am right now. Um, yeah. I played all sorts of Final Fantasies. Um, it was initially kick kickstarted by uh, me getting the pixel remasters on Steam when they were coming out. Um, but I was I was already kind of really into Final Fantasy 2 and 1, because I actually had those on the PSP. Um, which is like a really interesting release, thinking back. Because um, oftentimes, uh, Final Fantasy 1 and 2 in the States are just kind of uh, released in like some sort of package, <laughs> some sort of collection. Um, they did that with the GBA and uh, and on the PS1. Uh, but they actually on the PSP released uh, separate separate uh, discs, I guess, <laughs> UMDs for. Um, for Final Fantasy 1 and 2, and I got both of them, but uh, my PSP broke. <laughs> oh shoot. Uh, my PSP broke, I like dropped it off the side of my bed, and man, I love, I love Sony consoles, but boy, did they have a history of making those things fragile. <laughs> they were not the best things to get for someone who drops things. Someone subject to gravity. And I am one of those people. I am subject to gravity. Um, unfortunately. But some things you can't help. Like the fact that my PSP fell off the side of my bed. And, um, did some crazy internal damage so that it the system could not charge anymore. Um, but yeah. So I was not able to really play any of my PSP games for a really long time. Especially not since, like, not when it originally broke, because it's like, I did not have the kind of money, and the repair services just were not as available as they are today. Oh, oh I needed that one up, yeah. But yeah, um, I actually was really enjoying Final Fantasy 1 and 2 when I was playing them on the PSP. So I kind of had a bone to pick with um, those two games. Because I never got a chance to beat them before my PSP broke. But when the Pixel Remasters were coming out, I just thought, you know, it's time. It's time for me to finally get that run back. It's time for me to finally beat those games. And beat those games that I dang old did. <laughs> um, and uh, not only did I beat them, but man, I loved them. Oh my, oh man. Oh man. <laughs> oh yeah, I had like um, some extra lives. I should save. I, I, I am the kind of guy who saves profusely. I don't care what game. If I have the ability to save, boy, you know I'm about to dang old save. Did it work? Hold on. There you go. There we go. 
Um, but yeah, oh my gosh, I loved them, especially 2. Final Fantasy 2, and I'm not talking about, no, it's actually Final Fantasy 4 in Japan. I'm talking about Firion, Maria, Guy, freaking Leon, dang old Leon. I'm talking about Emperor of Palamecia. Man, that Final Fantasy 2. That game blew my dang mind. <laughs> and I lost it, man. Because that was a game that kind of showed me the merits, the classical game design merits of a, um, whoa, of uh, turn-based JRPGs. Now that's a that's a strange thing to say because it's kind of hard to kind of hard to explain to people. Um, what I mean about that, and hopefully I could try to get that out <laughs> while playing Super Mario Bros. and being bad at this game, but I'm gonna try my best right now. So like, so what I mean, right, is um, and my relationship with JRPGs and um the design philosophies, at, at least my understanding of it, uh, before, before Final Fantasy 2. So... Oh, jeez. Oh, man. I have to go fast. I must go fast. Go fast, Mario. Luigi. You're Luigi. I know you're Luigi. I can't believe I ever made that mistake. Oh, no! Oh, uh, I wish I didn't make that mistake. Whatever. I made it. <laughs> I'm into the next world, that's what it matters. Next stage. That's the important part. <sighs> I should save. I'm gonna save. Gotta save profusely, man. Gotta save every time. Uh, can I just, like... I want to rewrite some of these, man. talking about but yeah um so game design it's easy to talk about super mario bros for the intuitiveness of the gameplay and its ability to stand as a game gaming experience um Expressing, expressing the gameplay experience only through, you know, what you do in the game. Um, but that is not a thing that you commonly see in uh, the way, dang it, the way JRPGs are, um, are designed um, as far as I was concerned before Final Fantasy 2 because um, it is such um, a narrative driven experience <clears throat> so my perspective of it was um is that while, you know, JRPG is definitely one of my favorite, my favorite genres of video games, and definitely one of my, um, plenty of my favorite games in general are going to be, you know, JRPGs. <clears throat> but I kind of always felt like, um, JRPGs were like the gamers' games. Uh, they have a complexity that does not um, uh, that does not 
Oh my gosh, there's so much going on. Why did I decide to talk about such a complex thing when I'm trying to beat Super Mario Bros? What the? Why do I do this to myself? I'm not even good at this game. Uh, just, just play that. Keep this controller closer to me. But yeah, um... So, like, my my idea of JRPGs would be, to, like, really rigid. Like, they have to have this story, and they aren't intuitive. Not super intuitive, the same way Mario Bros. is. It doesn't tutorialize levels. It has to tell you... Um, it has to tell you how it works. It has to... Instead of showing you how it works the way uh, the first level of Mario Bros. does. Because <clears throat> there's such a lacking of intuitiveness in the progression. Because it has, like, it has level ups. It has... Um... It has a story that it needs to tell you. It... It's only story driven. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, that's not exactly the case, right? Because Final Fantasy 2, and pretty similarly to uh, many very early uh, turn based JRPGs, um, Uh, go, Luigi. Gosh. Whoa. Whoa. Hey, you. Dang, hammer bros suck. Okay. Gosh, just get away from me, you dang hammer bro. I don't want to... <laughs> I should save mid-level. I don't know. I shouldn't... Every time I, like, pass a hammer bro, I should just... I should just save. Screw that guy. I don't want to save here because I already lost a life. I still want to practice. I still need to practice. No, go away. I don't want to... Mm, the Koopa. I lost to that Koopa. Oh, I got a game over because of the Koopa. <laughs> uh, don't worry, my technology got my back. I'm just trying to win, y'all. Uh, but yeah, much like the um, the design of uh, early JRPGs, like Dragon Quest and you know Final Fantasy, um, they were trying to express a lot of things with minimal writing. Um, but of course, they still had writing and scenario. But the chief um, emotional, the, the emotional expression came largely from, from you know, the actual gameplay. <laughs> and I, and I, oh, there you go, no, with the Koopa. It's, it's, the, it's the Koopas today, man. I'm losing the Koopas. Dog. Oh. <laughs> Game over. I want to do game over. Duh. 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 There we go. See, that's that's worth saving. I'm gonna save that. I'll save that out because that dang old hammer, bro. What does he even want? Whatever. I, whatever he's selling, I don't want it. I don't want it. Then I just uh save this. There we go. There we go. I can't believe this. <laughs> this is why you save though. This is why you save. Whoa. Ugh. Yeah, um, 
So Final Fantasy 2 did find a way to sway emotions through just its gameplay and its minimal uh, narrative writing. Dang it. Every time I like <laughs> come up with like something something to say, man. Um, it didn't have a traditional or kind of like the mainstream uh, method of level ups uh, and character building. Because, um, you know, today you get EXP from winning battles and uh, you have a level uh, that you increase by uh, you know, defeating enemies and such, but that's not exactly how Final Fantasy 2 works. You don't have a level up system like that. Uh, you have your stats, um, like you do in other games, other RPGs. But you level up the individual stats, um, through your actions in battle. Well, say you want to increase your attack, um... You do so by attacking, using the attack command um, in battle. Or if you want to increase your um, HP, you actually have to take damage in battle. <laughs> and if you want to increase your magic abilities, and uh, magic was really interesting. Because of course you have your MP, uh, and you increase your MP by expending MP during battle, but also you have the levels of your individual spells. And you increase that, of course, by using that spell in battle. And there is an intuitiveness to uh, that system, although it's not, you know, in too common practice, at least not not, not in the distilled way it is in Final Fantasy 2. Gosh, I am not going to beat this game. Why did I do this to myself? Huh. Goodness gracious. Oh, these guys are the worst. Oh. That was skills. That wasn't luck. That was skills. That was also skills. That was skills. And you see, what you don't realize is that I have all these skills. Look at my skills. Don't with him! You see, um... I wanted to go easy on that guy. My skills took too many of his, uh, brethren. <clears throat> I don't like this stage. Nobody talks about 5-2. Because it's whack. But yeah, there was the intuitiveness, but also uh, what it wanted to do narratively. Uh, did I just double die? What just happened to me? Um, yeah, Final Fantasy 2. Um, I liked what it did with the Emperor. I liked what it did in... Uh, making me... Somehow making me actually feel, like, deliberately made me feel hubris in a video game. Uh, and it wasn't through, you know, writing a narrative. It didn't write Furion as a person as, like, with his tragic flaw of pride. No, it is me as a person. Me as a person who grew throughout the uh, gameplay of that game it made me feel like um, like I was just above everything else in that game and it very very deliberately does so <laughs> until you get to the end and it shows you the tragedy of your flaw and it is a it and you know that it's deliberately done because it is uh, reflected in the villain, uh, the Emperor of Final Fantasy 2. Um, 
because he is you don't really even know him by name and I don't think he actually has a name he is just the emperor of Palamecia um, but he puts himself above everything else in the world because he's the emperor because he's going to take it over because he is um, able to do all these crazy things because he is simply more powerful than everything else he has trumped everything else that has uh, been put in his path it doesn't matter how many men or how many soldiers or countries are against him he is above them all and the game Final Fantasy 2 uh, makes you as the player playing Firion and his party feel the same way because you because uh, you go through the things. You go to trump everything that he puts in front of you. You put in the work, too. You grind. Boy, do you grind. But you got stronger. Your stats become ridiculous. And that is the meat of the gameplay. Getting your stats ridiculous. Because you're so strong. But in doing that, you also... Um... Parallel the the Emperor Until you get to the end when you fight the Emperor because of course you're gonna fight the Emperor at the end He is the looming big bad of the entire game There's no plot twist. It is Emperor He is the one he's the one you're gonna have to try to beat I really just want to beat this level now. Oh my gosh! But yeah, um, I don't want to spoil too much about it because I think people need to give Final Fantasy 2 a fair shot. Knowing... Just knowing that it is supposed to make you feel like you're above everything. And I think that is um, where people uh, miss the point of the game. Because they already feel like they're above the game. They're like, oh, all you have to do is grind and then you break the game lame. No, you're supposed to do that. You're supposed to feel that way, um, just so you know. But I don't want to spoil the final boss fight, because to me, in my opinion, that is the boss fight of video games. Because it because it wrapped up such a thesis. It, made, it, it, it came in, and it has a real point to make. And I'm not going to tell you all of it. Because you need to go in there and you need to feel the, your, feel the weight of your hubris and notice that a game was designed entirely around making you feel that way. <laughs> um. <clears throat> and to me, that was brilliant. And that's what made Hironobu Sakaguchi um, a name to know as a game designer, as a game director. Like Hideo Kojima, I will never touch any of your games. What's a, what is a Hideo Kojima Productions? No. Who else is there? Dang old... Dang Masahiro Sakurai, I love that guy. I love his games, he made Kirby. But he didn't make dang old Final Fantasy 2! Duh! <laughs> um... God, just gotta uh, just want to get through this stage. I just know I don't want to put up with this stage anymore. I want to go God, yeah. There we go. Just get me out of here. Get me out of here <laughs> uh. Oh my gosh, all right five three let's go <laughs> Oh my gosh, I should save this interface is cute, but like <laughs> Uh, for my purposes, man, it's, um, it's not the great user experience. Oh man, it's really hard. God, what was I saying? Final Fantasy 2 is goaded. Don't let any critics tell you what else. If they if they say it's not goaded, they're whack. <laughs> they don't understand video games. They don't understand the power of games. If people tell you that the only way to tell a game's story, to make you understand the development of a character's 
is through written narrative. They're whack. They don't know what they're talking about. They don't understand games. They probably didn't play Final Fantasy 2. They, pro they probably didn't fight Emperor Palamecia. They probably just went, oh, I'm too strong. I'll just stop playing this game. They thought they were too good. And that's, that's just their hubris. <laughs> Goodness gracious. I wonder how much... Uh, I wonder how much crap I'm gonna get for that. I don't know. Give me some crap. Give me crap in the comments. Tell me if you played Final Fantasy 2 and if I'm full crap. If a written narrative in a video game is way more important than what you're able to feel through your thumbs. Because I've, I've felt sympathy for a video game character, right? But I'm talking pure empathy designed into a video game. And the answer is no. I have not seen that a whole lot. Not in the JRPG space. Not in... Not in the more modern stuff that I played. I have not played a whole lot of modern RPGs. Um, modern 2020 decade JRPGs. So, you know, maybe somebody did uh, catch on. Catch on to gameplay. Applying gameplay to swaying the emotions. Um, not to say that, you know, there wasn't some in the Final Fantasy series even that have done something with the gameplay uh, to make you uh, feel that empathy, you know? I'm just saying, there's more to uh, telling the story, more to swing emotions deliberately than, you know, just uh, writing the narrative for it. And that's um, it's kind of my viewpoint beforehand of of um, of JRPGs beforehand. They tell the narrative, and the uh, gameplay is just kind of copy paste, turn based. Woohoo! I mean, I do like doing the turn based stuff, but it doesn't have like the emotional merits. Like this game, there's Mario, right? Super Mario Bros. Definitely is making me feel. I'm engaged with Luigi. Seeing this screen makes me sad. It's conveying emotion through gameplay. And the growth that I'm supposed to be feeling through getting through this level is the growth that you should be feeling as Luigi. Overcoming this. Oh my goodness! Ah. Uh, I need more... I need more lives, man. <laughs> what did I save here? <laughs> oh my gosh. This dang old game. This dang old game. But yeah, um... So I done lost my mind because it was blown by uh, by Final Fantasy 2. So I played most of the Final Fantasy series just following it. Um, so I think I really beat Final Fantasy 2, then 1. And then um, my very kind supervisor, my friend and supervisor at the time, because I was, I was still employed at the time. Uh, my friend and supervisor, Caleb, um, gave me Final Fantasy 3 Pixel Remaster. I was all like, oh snap, I guess I better keep going. <laughs> and I decided, you know what, after that I, I'll just get the rest of the Pixel Remasters. Um, and it was just such a, it was a great experience playing through all the Final Fantasy games. All the, uh, all the classic ones. Still didn't beat 7. I like, I'm a little bit anxious about that. I'm like saving that one. <laughs> I like bought it twice. I bought it on Steam and then like I bought it also on the Switch. Because 7 and 8 on Steam 
may not be the, the greatest versions. Um, at least not eight. Like, I bought eight twice as well. Um, I don't recommend <laughs> uh, the Steam version of eight. Can't really play it with a controller. Your, uh, your controller mapping won't be out of whack. Um, and for some reason, I don't know what I was thinking there. For some reason, Square Enix doesn't really like, um, fixing a whole lot of issues with their, uh, Steam builds <laughs> of games. That is my take. That is my modern understanding of them. Why was I even talking about Final Fantasy? Um, oh shoot. Oh, good. No, good. Oh, good. <laughs> I could just play this game, man. I could play this on like the Switch or something. I have like a rewind. Just have a general better UX <laughs> when restarting. But no, I decided I want to be Luigi. I'm gonna. I'm gonna play this on. I might take mini. I love my mini though. I love my mini consoles. I need to get the uh, PlayStation Mini. Uh, people didn't like the library when it first came out, but no, you weren't gonna please anybody ever with a uh, PlayStation Mini library. It was just gonna be impossible to please everyone because at that point in gaming. Uh, there was, there was just so many, there were just so many games to grow up with when it came to the PS1. It's not like, it's not like the NES where it's all like, yeah, man, there's only so many games and only so many of them were good. But by the time we got to shoot, by the time we got to even like the Super Nintendo era, uh, games started getting good and then you progress into, uh, PS, oops. PS1, and there are some very good games on the PS1, um, and there's also just more, more good games <laughs> uh, to have um, grown up with, and the uh, the quintessentials for one one guy is not going to be exactly the quintessentials of um, you know his neighbor. Like, someone could go, well, you could have had, like, DDR Konomics <laughs> on your PS1. Because that was just, like, one of the definitive things to be playing uh, back in the day. Was uh, DDR. You go to a car arcade, you can play DDR. Put, like, 50 cents, man. Be the star of the show, everybody's gonna watch you. <laughs> um, I better save that. Oh, shoot. Why does it sound so intense in here? All right. Um, but you know, not everybody is gonna have like the home DDR. Uh, you could say, well, you should have had like Mega Man X4, and um, yeah, Mega Man X4 was freaking fly. But um, you know, not everybody played Mega Man X4. Not everybody was a hardcore Mega Man fan. I've gotten that far. Although many have. You could say you could have Resident Evil, you could have Silent Hill. There are just so many games on the PS1 that uh, there's so many people that grew up with different things, different tastes. You weren't going to please anybody. Uh, you weren't going to please everybody with, you know, just no matter what, what you put on there. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, oh man, oh stupid fire, I'm just gonna run, just run. Stupid Bowser breathing on things, stop breathing on things! Oh, it's the platform. The platform did it to me, I was about to get out of there. But yeah, I still want a PlayStation, a PlayStation Classic, and uh, I was definitely still... It was definitely coming out in a time, uh, again, when I just did not have the money to buy it when it, when it released. Uh, I just got a... 
Yeah, easy peasy. <laughs> hey, Toad. Thank you, Luigi. But our princess is in another castle. Sure. Sure thing, Toad. How many worlds are there? Like eight of them? Man, so many. So many dang worlds. Gosh, I'm really bad at the trampoline stuff. <laughs> my timing is just stinky. Oh, that's dangerous stressful. Oh my gosh. All right, gotta, gotta beat this other castle, man. Oh. Luigi. Dang. Dang fireball thingies. What are they called? Uh-oh. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, with the Bowser. Oh. Whatever, whatever, Bowser. I don't care. Get away. <laughs> hey, Toad. Right on, man. For some reason, I really like bloopers. <laughs> uh oh. Like, I like their designs. I don't know, I like their, I like their little googly eyes. Looks adorable to me, you know? Ooh, if I'm careful, I could get a 1-up here. I need 1-ups. I need to get a 1-up and also survive. So that I could just bring that 1-up with me, man. Alright, Luigi, just gotta go. Just gotta punch it. Just, just go through it, man. We got this. Oh, no, I don't want to lose that. Oh. But it's okay. Just get through the stage. Just get through the stage. Yes. Is that it? There we go. Kept the bun up, got through the stage. I wish I still had the mushroom, but you know what? It's just a mushroom. There's gonna be other mushrooms. This place is very long. I like how non violent it is. Um, in fact, I think it might be looping. All right, I need the power Nintendo power, so it's like something about the paths. It work? Huh! Ah. And get past Bowser. There we go! <laughs> I'm really hoping that Daisy's in the Super Mario Bros. movie just secretly. Because you can't tell everybody everything. Not in your dang old Mario directs. You have to secretly put in Daisy. I hope they somehow put, like, a nod in for, like, the, uh, live-action movie. I would love that. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> As a little kid, I enjoyed the heck out of that, uh, live-action Super Mario Bros. movie. Uh, we even own it on DVD somewhere? Come on, is this the end? It's not. I like that Buzzy Beetle. He looks like a jerk. There we go. Progress. Progress, Luigi. There we go. Oh my gosh. What? Oh no. I don't know why I thought that pipe would be safe. But like, who puts who puts a piranha plant there? Like, at the end of the stage, man? Come on. Is this the end? I want it to be the end. Oh gosh, it is the end. Thank goodness, man. Oh my gosh. Screw off. Screw off. Alright. Alright, all I have to do is jump onto these. That's it. There we go. Oh my gosh, dude. Alright. Just gotta get past whatever Bowser's doing here, right? That guy disappeared. Why did that guy disappear? I'm back at the beginning. I'm back at the beginning. I die? I died. Come on, Ouija. You're so close. You're at a level 8-4. I think that's like the end. That has to be like the end, right? Here, I'll go through this one. Because it looks like progress. I don't think I've seen a section with buzzy beetles in it. 
I go in there? Uh oh. I go in here? Stop it though with the dang turtle! Just gonna try to go up here. Man, well now what do I do? What now? This cheap, cheap. I don't have time for cheap, cheap. What is it? Water? Oh, look, water. Now, what do I do? Oh! I hate that that happened. What the heck, man? Oh, and I have to start at the beginning. And now I can just swim and don't get hit. Oh my gosh, I don't want to die. But this part doesn't seem that bad. Look at this. Smooth. Oh my gosh, I'm so bouncy off of the walls. There you go. I need to get better at this whole swimming thing. <laughs> no, real talk. Whoa, 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 Oh yeah, real talk, I don't actually know how to swim. Like my siblings would like try to teach me, but uh, back in the day, but they like gave up. Oh no, I can't be telling childhood stories again. Not when I'm like at the boss, man. All right, I just gotta get past this dang old Koopa. Just as Koopa man, oh. What even hit me? I really don't know what's hitting me. But whatever is hitting me is hitting me. Like, maybe the answer is just to go. Just to freaking go. The answer was just to go. Just to freaking go. Oh, thank you. Oh, your quest is over. We present you a new quest. Push the B button to select a new world. Select a world. What? are you talking about? Select a world. I guess... I guess that's it, right? That's the game. I win. Am I supposed to beat this game twice? <sighs> I'm gonna save it and act as if I uh, beat the game. Because I went through all the stages, man. I I, I, I axed Bowser. I beat the game. <laughs> That's it, guys. I did it. I finally beat um, a Super Mario Bros. after so many years. And I did it with a Luigi run. Guys, thank you so much for being here to witness this. It was... Oh, my gosh. I can't believe I decided to do this. I'm going to have to make so many cuts. Anyway, guys, remember, if you had as much fun as I did or more, be sure to like and share with a buddy. So they too can become fellow heroes. And also, uh, remember to subscribe if you haven't, um, so that you could uh, keep up with the Smackchan packed content that we're going to continue rolling out. Um, anyway, once again, guys, thank you so much for being here, and I will see you in the next Smackchan packed adventure.